Well, welcome back, listeners. This is uh, another episode of Go Be Wyoming, Wyoming's local podcast. And today is another episode of Sports Business Nation. So we kind of cross over Sports Business Nation and Go Be Wyo, especially when we have a guest that uh, fits into both categories. Um, our guest is a local Wyomingite from Buffalo, Wyoming, Chris Brzezinski. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Excited Th- to be here. Yeah, we're excited to learn kind of about the whole college process, uh, NFL process, um, you know, from the sports side, business side. Um, and you're, you know, you're now a financial advisor, too, with the lives and financial here in Sheridan. So yep. we're going to be able to cover a lot of different things. Before we get going, Chris, pull that into you just a little bit under your sure. Yeah, There we go. Good. Yeah, there we go. Good. All right. um, so awesome. <coughs> We've got way too many notes here, Tyler. That's good. That's all right. Um, Nothing but time. thorough, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, for anyone that doesn't know you, um, you were kind of a standout athlete at Buffalo High School. Um, your resume is impressive. I don't know if we need to go over all of it, but just for people at home, you were a football state champ. You're the offensive player of the year. Your senior year won two state championships, I think, in football. Yep. Um, you were a basketball state champ as well standout basketball player and then uh, track and field athlete too and you yep. won a couple events too also in track so uh as a coach i'll say this to my young listeners play multiple sports uh chris yeah. played three sports there so yeah definitely uh well-rounded and the more you can do obviously yeah um especially in wyoming the yes you probably get noticed <laughs> yes yeah. yeah and you know talking about that you were a heavily recruited you know, player, obviously out of Wyoming, but um, what were some of the other schools that were interested in you? And then what ultimately led you to pick University of Wyoming? Yeah, so my recruiting uh, process was a, probably a little different than most, especially nowadays, because um, mm-hmm. I committed to the University of Wyoming uh, in my junior year. Okay. Um, so I didn't really go through any recruiting process my senior year, but to answer your question, it was a lot of the regional Mountain West Mountain West at the time, so it was like CSU. I went on a visit, um, Air Force, uh, Boise, um, but it was kind of nice because I recruit. Uh, I did a junior day at UW. Um, my junior year it was when Coach Glenn and they offered me right there, so I committed within a week. And oh, awesome! I didn't have to do the whole, you know, traveling circuit my senior year. Yeah, I didn't have to worry about any of that. So. Um, and then, you know, I didn't have to worry about picking a the school whole or anything, recruiting yeah. Recruiting process and going on visits and talking to meeting with coaches and everything. Mm-hmm. So um kind of got out of the way early, um, which was nice, yeah. honestly. Yeah. What yeah. um how long was Glenn there when you were there? Uh so he w- my first two years was with Coach Glenn. Um and then Dave Christensen after. Yep, okay. Yep. Gotcha. Um so yeah, I had 2006 I graduated high school they had just well I committed just they had just won the Vegas Bowl okay um I don't know if you guys remember against UCLA Javon um, Bonite yeah Javon yes. Bonite oh, yeah. uh Bramlett um Wendling was kind of my role model um so yeah it was kind of high times and so I mean they were going into this next season mm-hmm. with top 25 votes and um they actually started that next year. My senior year, the Wyoming started that year off really strong, and I think they were like 6-0, and and then um, the wheels kind of fell off. But, right. Um, yeah, it made my decision pretty easy, obviously, yeah. just being an in-state kid and then how the program was at the time. Right. So Yeah, that's a, that's a good little history there for people that haven't been following Wyoming like that. That's, you know, win the Vegas Bowl against UCLA, you know, yeah. getting top 25 picks, like pretty easy decision there. Maurice yeah. Jones-Drew. Yeah. I don't even know where Wyoming's at. Is yeah. that even a state? <laughs> and I played with Mojo in uh, oh, Jacksonville. Yeah. 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 yeah, he honestly was probably one of my favorite, favorite teammates too. Yeah, yeah. Good dude. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Mercedes Lewis, I don't know if he was there at the time too. Oh, I think okay, he wow. was. But yeah. I played with both of them and those guys. Yeah, yeah, Jacksonville. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, we had some fun conversations on that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet. Whenever you can rub it in on those guys, it's always probably yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. You don't have too many opportunities. So yes. <laughs> um, from what just outside looking in, because that was a long time ago, getting recruited, and like you said, you picked pretty early. Mm-hmm. What have you seen that's different now in recruiting? Oh, man. I think it's all different, honestly. Yeah. Um, I'm not too in the loop of 
the whole recruiting process now, but I'm sure with all the NIL, um, the transfer portals changing things mm-hmm. big time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't really answer that, but I'm sure there's probably just more incentives. And mm-hmm. um, like I said, I didn't have a real extensive recruiting process um, just because I committed so early. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of hard to know even what it was like at the time, but um, I'm sure there's a lot that's changed and sure. even social media. I feel like that was, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I got my Facebook account my first year in college. And yeah. Now it's, you know, their Twitter, Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, kids like have them their freshman change, year of high school. Huge. Um, I just see, you know, like kids go on recruiting visits and they're in all the swag and yeah. Um, doing all these photo shoots and whatnot. So yeah, we didn't really have any of that. <laughs> um, you didn't get Joe Glenn to do like that little video that, uh, that kid at LSU got, uh, yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah, do that he, with Joe uh, Glenn. He shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, but my recruiting trip was pretty uh, – I mean, you, you know, you meet coaches, go to dinner. Um, but I remember – you got to remember I'm like just a junior from Buffalo, Wyoming. And I went on my recruiting trip. And my host that night, you know, he'd take you to like a college party. Yep. Um, and it was – I don't know if you guys remember Derek Martin. Mm-hmm. Um, the corner played in the league for a while. It was Derek Martin, Quincy Rogers, and um, – yeah, it was. I was like, "Well, what am I getting myself into <laughs> at this college party?" It was fun, but um, crazy experience. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And I would reiterate that's at any level because Shattern was the same way. Like Black Hills, you know, like those smaller schools. That's that's just what it is. You know? Yeah. Um, so try to wine and dine a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, like I said, I think it's all just changed so much. And right. Whatever, ten, fifteen years. Yeah. Um, do you think meeting those guys helped you though? Like, you know, getting to hang out with the players, you know, no coaches around, you know? uh, Yeah. I mean, it helps as far as, you know, the chemistry and meeting guys, but my decision, I don't think it would have changed at all. Um, yeah, I was pretty set. I mean, I was pretty set on going to Wyoming. Literally they offered me and I think I went home and probably took two or three days and I was like, called them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. So awesome. Um, yeah, there was really nothing that they needed to do to persuade me. Yeah. Other than what I had already seen. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's um, pretty easy. We were just talking about NIL and transfer portal. Do you think if you were given the opportunity, like, especially like a graduate transfer, like, you know, some of these guys get an extra year, mm-hmm. some of even these guys right now with COVID have another, another year, right. uh, do you think you would take an opportunity to go to a bigger school? Um, no. No. No, not at all. Um, and I mean, it's easy for me to say. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, and you know, I have different feelings on NIL and then the trans, the transfer portal is, and I don't know all the details, but just seeing Wyoming this past year, it's going to kill, you know, small programs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know how to follow Wyoming basketball this year doing really well. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm nervous for some of those guys. It's just like it's going to kill these small, mm-hmm. um, smaller programs. Um, but at the same time, you can't blame the kids so much. It's more the system. Yeah. Um, for these guys have opportunities to go, you know, if they have aspirations playing at the next level, that are oper- you know, they're obviously going to get more eyes on them mm-hmm. at some of those bigger schools. So you can't really blame them for doing it yeah um it's more the system um but in my position i pretty confident yeah i would say 100 percent that i wouldn't have transferred in yeah yeah do you you agree with that sentiment from athletes that they claim that like you know say for the wyoming football players that have left they've gone on to bigger programs and that's great Mm -hmm. but you know we've got a whole list of here when you're at um u-dub and and really ever since Glenn Christensen and even bowl, we've got plenty of Cowboys in the NFL. Like, do you agree with that statement of, Oh, I'll get better eyes and all this right, stuff. Yeah. In the it's kind of, yeah, it's funny you say that. Cause, um, and I think a lot of them just, they're young. They think the um, it's always greener on the other side, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but, and I tell even high school kids, this, if you're good enough, they're going to find you. Yeah. Um, that's just coming from Buffalo. You know, it's like, 
three, 4,000 people. Um, sometimes it takes a little more, but, um, yeah, if, if you're good enough, they're going to find you. I mean, even recently, I don't ever remember this many guys being in the league from Wyoming. I, there's got to be at least 10 to 15. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have guys like Josh Allen, um, Logan Wilson. Yeah. Um, and they're just kind of putting more of even a spotlight on the program. And yeah. I think Mole's done a good job. Um, but yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think guys necessarily are. I mean, I get the sentiment, like you said, of trying to go to a bigger program, playing it, but at the same time, yeah. I mean, they're going to find you at yep. Wyoming too. So yeah. if you, if you, uh, sometimes you just have to do a little more to prove yourself, but mm-hmm. it's not always a bad thing. Yeah. Have a yeah. little chip on your shoulder is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, we have, I should have asked you this too. Um, when did you have this uh, desire to go to the NFL? When did you know that was something that you wanted to do? And then when did that turn like, oh, I could actually have a chance? Yeah. It's funny because people are always like, you know, you dream of it. Right. Um, which I guess you could say, but it wasn't really my case. It was always like, I always kind of just took the next step. So when I was young, it was like high school varsity football. Like those guys were my idols. Like I always wanted to play high school varsity football. Then I got there and, you know, by sophomore junior year it's like oh maybe i can play college mm-hmm. uh, but it was never like was in sixth grade like oh i'm gonna go to the nfl type deal right and then once you get to college it was probably my junior year um had a pretty good junior year and you just start hearing things you agents start reaching out that's kind of the first and so you know you're like oh they must be hearing something so um then it kind of came in awesome um you know, came into the picture, came yeah. in, you know, my plan a little bit, but, um, yeah, probably I wouldn't say I didn't even really cross my yeah. mind until my junior year in college. Yeah. Um, I think I that's a, a chance to play in the NFL. I think that's better advice and more realistic for young guys. Like, like mm-hmm. I love that you said my first goal was just varsity football. Like yeah. some kids skip that. They're like, I'm going to go get a college offer. It's like, well, yeah. you're skipping a whole <laughs> Yeah. And then the they process. just focus on, um, that's kind of even when I was met with the sharing team yeah. out here. It's I see a lot of high school kids now. They're they they're so focused on getting a scholarship, they kind of lose focus on doing their job currently and enjoying mm-hmm. the moment. Uh, and I still tell people my best time I just pure football was high school football. Yeah, because um, you kind of took the business side out of it. Um, and the politics side. Well, there's probably some politics in high school football too. But, yeah, but not as a uh, player, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just go out and play. Um, not when you're all state winning state championships. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. especially. Yeah, your job's not yeah. on the line. You're you not, they're not going to kick you out of the school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. probably some of my best memories still. Yep. Yeah, no, and Chris, Chris isn't lying to the show here because he came and talked to the team and – he said the exact same thing to those guys that that was the best high, football experience. You yeah. Know, was high school football. And, uh, that resonated with them for sure. Yeah. Um, talk, going back to UW a little bit, I kind of jumped there, but I kind of wanted to hear your thought on that. You know, you hear all these players like, Oh, I've been dreaming of playing in the NFL since I was six. And it's like, yeah. well, I, I think everyone does, but, um, yeah. but, um, at, at UW, so you were with Glenn, you know, Glenn kind of, uh, like you were saying, when you got recruited, they're winning some big bowl games, getting up there, um, transition to Dave Christensen, and obviously we know Christensen kind of almost probably exact opposite of Glenn, you know, offensively and all that stuff. But uh, Christensen had some great wins too, and you were part of the New Mexico Bowl win in 2009. Yep. Um, how exciting is that experience, you know, a bowl game? Uh, it was fun, and that was my only experience. But, then, you know, that was kind of always our goal going into the seasons. Um but I think we had to – actually, I think we had to beat CSU to become bowl eligible that year. Okay. Um, which was my junior year. So that was exciting, and it, kind of, it was kind of all just escalated towards the end of the year. Um, but, yeah, the whole bowl experience, and I'm sure it's, like I said, changed now. Even, sure. You know, 10, 15 years later. But um, it's just a cool experience. You know, you get to go for the week, and um, you get a bunch of swag from the bowl games. And um, – just being on national TV and then the game itself was really exciting. You guys were probably too young to even remember it, but um, we played Fresno state with Ryan Matthews, 
was probably one of the better running backs yeah um that year and they had the ball at the end of the game it was first and goal literally probably on the one or two yard line and we held them four consecutive running attempts so it was fun it was exciting yeah um what did it mean to you to end with a win like that, you know, being a Wyoming kid and end your career as a cowboy like that? Yeah, it was exciting. Um, just growing up in the state, you know kind of the passion and how much it means to the fans. Um, so Wyoming, I mean, Wyoming fan, being the only university, is the, people live for that here. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really exciting just to see kind of the energy throughout the state. Um, and you see that all the time, I mean, yeah, look at like Josh Allen. Now it's like Buffalo Bills or the Wyoming's team, or even the men's basketball team. Um, I had a, ch a couple of years ago went to Vegas for the Mountain West tournament when Larry Nance was playing. Yeah, um, it seemed like the whole state was there. So it's just Wyoming's different, different in that respect as far as just kind of the loyalty mm -hmm. and the um, passion. Just because it's kind of the only show, not kind of, it is the only show yeah, in the state. You're right. Um, so, to answer your question, yeah, it was just fun to kind of give back to the state um, for you know yeah. so much support they've shown me in the program and right, just, you know, Wyoming in general. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, don't date yourself. We were we we were watching How those. How are you guys? <laughs> I'm 27. I'm 33. Yeah, okay. so yeah. You, yeah. We're on the same year. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. yeah. We played each other in basketball. Okay. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, but we had your highlight film and like my parents are from Buffalo. So like growing up, like, yeah, I remember like, no, we're going to go to UW game. You know, there's Chris Persinski's out there. He's from Buffalo, you know? So yeah. I remember going to some games and watching on TV. So, yeah. um, that CSU game we were watching, you had, there's a highlight there. Um, I didn't know that you had to beat CSU to get bowl eligible. Uh, yeah. You made a pretty critical play. Um, I think it was like a fourth down or a third down on a uh, run. Was that the, I think, I don't know. I don't remember. It was on your was stellar a, highlight. Yeah. Room. Oh, was it? <laughs> on was YouTube it, uh, there. <laughs> I don't remember if it was, was it, had to be in the red zone maybe. Were they in the red zone? Uh, middle of the field, but. Uh, okay. Shoot. Yeah, I can't remember. That's right. But, um. Yeah, there was one play on the edge kind of where I made a tackle. I don't know if it was a reverse or something. Yeah. Maybe it's not the same play we're thinking of. Um, but, yeah, that was an exciting game, something I'll remember, remember for a while. Yeah. yeah. It's literally the thumbnail of your highlights at the University of Wyoming. Is it? Yeah. You just stuff in CSU. Love to see it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah, there's nothing better than uh, beating the Rams. Yes. And actually, you know, I don't. I, I want to say we beat the CSU <clears throat> at least three of the. Oh, you played four years. Tennessee. Yeah, that was a cool game too. That actually was crazy. We were obviously pretty big underdogs. That was um, when Tennessee was a powerhouse. Two thousand eight. Yeah, they right? were having a rough year um, that year, I think. Um, but I mean, it was still. But playing you know, in front of 100,000 100, people. people. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was just my sophomore year, too. So I was like, I've never been in front of that many people ever. <laughs> um, That's a great uh, – what's one of the coolest college stadiums you've been in? So obviously Tennessee there yeah, would be pretty Yeah, Texas. Neat. That was cool. We played in Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tennessee was cool. Um, probably those. Those two. College. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to think. Um, there. I mean, the Mountain West has changed so much even since I was. Uh, I think that was my sophomore year too. Um, this is bad. Since this is bad I was radio, in, bad uh, podcast. Yeah, Rams fans are crying <laughs> watching this thing. Yeah. Interceptions, tackles. Season uh, <laughs> the Mountain West. So it was really good conference when I was. Not it still is, but mm -hmm. it was like TCU. Yeah. Um, BYU, uh, Utah was in the Mountain West. So Utah was always a cool place to play. Um, Boise, of course, they were really good. Yeah, and Boise, we played there, but they weren't in the Mountain West at the time. But, yeah, we played there yeah. on the uh, blue turf. And That's awesome. But, yeah, Tennessee, Texas, those, I mean, um, just, yeah, it was that whole Yeah, just different level, yeah. yeah. Um, and those stadiums was pretty cool. So... How do you uh, 
what do you think? We've talked about this a little bit. What do you think uh, the Cowboy program? I know it's been a while since you've been there, but um, you know what makes the Cowboy program like find these NFL stars. So like, we'll run through this list real quick of just when you were there, mm -hmm. you've got you, Mitch Unrine, Tashawn Gibson, Mark and Zacha, Josh Doxson, uh, Mazzy. Oh man, I'm going to butcher that. Mazzy. Mazzy. Yep. Uh, Robert Haran, uh, Marguson Huff, and then Mike Purcell. We were just talking, he's still in the league. Yeah, yeah. And then of course we've talked about like, you know, Logan Wilson, Josh Allen, there's some other guys, you know, yeah. from after, but what makes it being a cowboy that you think that? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, and maybe I just talk just of when like you were there. Yeah, I mean it's tough to re you have to almost you have kind of have to find a special kid that come to Wyoming. I mean it's tough to recruit to Wyoming. So um, typically those guys that we can get to Wyoming, they're just blue collar. You know, they put their head down and work. Um, and honestly, that's the biggest way to have success, um, the best way to have success, you know, not a lot of egos. Usually there, there's not a lot of, well, really any four or five star recruits. Um, so guys kind of have always just, you know, been maybe like the underdog mentality. So they just know how to work. Um, and then bloom late. I mean, look at like Josh Allen. I'm just, you just develop a little later. Um, and you get some good coaching and, um, yeah, but I think ultimately it's just working. Um, and, and like you said, they'll find you. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of times, probably some of those bigger programs, people just feel privileged almost. Like, you know, it's just like going to happen. <laughs> it's just I'm going to go to Alabama. I'm going to go to the NFL. Um, and they kind of get lost in the process probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still turn out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their whole starting it off. I don't know who I'm kidding, but – yeah. Uh, yeah, I think probably that. Um, just like special mindset of guys um, that just know how to work. And then I think now that guys have seen that you can go to the league and you can have success, uh, um, just makes it, you know, yeah. that much easier for – it's kind of just a vision. Mm -hmm. you guys have, like for myself, it was like – I kind of mentioned him earlier, John Wendling was a senior when I was a freshman. So literally I just – Everything he did, I just watched and soaked it up. You know, it's like, watch how he did it. Obviously, played the game, but it was everything from schoolwork to how he took care of his body, um, how he handled the media, whatever. So, yeah, it's just... Um, having yeah, those good role having, models. Yeah, somebody to kind of a path to lead it, and that's who it was for me. And um, Now they have several of them, like you mentioned. Yeah. So just the vision's a little easier, a yeah. little clearer, I guess. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. Good little plug, too, for Wyoming. That's that's Andy what we want. Bill. He got drafted by yeah. the Bills. Oh, nice. Yeah, Bills and then Lions. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Well, talking about that, we kind of hit on it already. So the draft process or getting drafted starts with agents start calling you. Yeah. And what are those calls like? Yeah, so uh, – I kind of mentioned that was kind of, that was somewhat of how I got the idea that it was even an opportunity. Yeah, an opportunity to go to the next level was because you start hearing from agents. Um, I took I what I did, and I don't right or wrong, but I actually I I would take a call from an agent, but I wouldn't discuss anything. I was like, you know, I'm going to finish my senior year, and then I'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm sure most guys will talk during the season or just will, and whatnot. But, yeah, there's probably a handful of different agents um, that you would reach out. Um, and then after my senior year is when I actually – well, I take that back. I think during my senior year I would just have – you know, if they would come to Laramie, the agent, I would have my parents meet with them, like, the night before the game at hotels. And obviously they would be a ju good judge of – you know, character and how mm -hmm. it would all fit with, you know, kind of my characteristics and goals, whatever. Yeah. Um, but then after I, after finished my senior year, you know, I sat down with them. Um, some, some of the agents, uh, there was an agency in New York that flew me and my dad out. And um, again, just a 
Wyoming kid. We were in New York, and they wind and dine you and take you to um, – I think we went to a hockey game. Um, so it was a cool experience. But um, actually how I got hooked up with my agent was through uh, – actually, I felt like I knew who I was going to go with, another agent. And then one of my coaches at Wyoming, uh, Pete Caligas, who's actually still there, one of the coaches, I think he's still there. He just took he just took Buddy. a Washington job. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, he's, yeah, a, he's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was one of the guys that went from like – I think he was there with, with Glenn, the Christensen, the mm-hmm. bowl. And yeah, um, he had a relationship with the agent out in Seattle. Um, it was literally, I wasn't going to meet with him, but I was like, and then the agent's like, I'll come to Buffalo, Wyoming. So he literally, he flew into Billings, drove up to Buffalo. I was like, that's pretty impressive. Not nobody else had done that. Um, and, um, really just kind of fit my style kind of just more low key. Um, he wasn't, you know, going to like some of the others, it was nice, but he wasn't going to wine and dine me just, um, more blue collar guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually ended up going with him at the last minute. Um, so yeah, it can be kind of a exhausting process. I'm sure. sure, Especially with some of those really the high end guys. yeah, Yeah. Top prospects. Um, but yeah, so that was the first part, and then we're. What, did you want to just? Were we talking about the rest of the process? I guess. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, picking the agent. That's kind of the first step, and then leading up to. Oh, let me stop you. I just had a question. I think. To, um, yeah. What's the role of the agent? So like, you're obviously trying to get to know them, but yeah. At the end of the day, what's their what's their job for you, especially in getting drafted? Because it's like you haven't even you know. Yeah. Um. So obviously the biggest the reason why you typically would get an agent is the contract and the negotiations and all the legal work. Um, but yeah, there's a whole, so my agent, um, he, you know, he invested in me enough to fly me to Florida and train with uh, Tom Shaw there at the ESPN uh, wide world of sports. Okay. And, you know, put me up in a place and, got a rental car for a couple months and bought all my food. So up front, it's an investment for them not knowing, you know, I wasn't a huge prospect at the time. Uh, I didn't even get invited to the combine. I just did the pro day. Um, So yeah, his, that was kind of his role. You know, I was like, he was willing to do all that. um, And obviously in hopes that it pays off for him. Right. um, Through my career and having an extended career, which obviously it did. Um, for both sides um but yeah a lot of the agents the contract negotiations but their biggest is probably once the biggest process is that first you know getting drafted yep um, where they have to do all the uh marketing and then you know get you your training and work through all the draft process and combine process and flying to meet teams um but after that it's not you know, they'll negotiate the contract and then there's not, at least for me, um, right. There's not a whole lot that they do besides, you know, when your contract's up then negotiate the next one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that was his role. He did, a, he did a really good job for me. Uh, like I said, I wasn't invited to the combine. Um, but I had a really good pro day. Uh, I got, went to, uh, I don't even think they have it anymore. Texas first nation was like an all-star game. Okay. Um, uh, Played in that, which helped um, where there's, you know, obviously scouts throughout the week um, that come and watch. And then um, went on four or five visits, I think, the team's pre-draft visits. Um, so he kind of orchestrates all that. Yeah. Um, Does he prep you for those? And, and then what are those So, yeah, like? that was all the prep was in when I went to Florida. Okay. Um, to Orlando. Um, so there it was obviously like physical, like training. Um I don't know if you, you guys sometimes should look up Tom Shaw. He's just a speed guru. Um, it was really cool. Um, I mean, probably one of the top speed guys in the country. Not a lot of linemen go to him. It's more skilled right. players. Skilled guys, yeah. Um, but there, you know, you would do like, um, what they call it? What was the Wonderlick test? Mm-hmm. They would kind of just give you pointers on Wonderlick test and, um, yeah, like I said, most of it was the physical part, but yeah, you would sit and do kind of some like 
mock interviews. Yeah, mock interviews, kind of what to expect. Um, but yeah, uh, Tom shot. Yeah, there it is. Um, him. And I don't, I don't know if he's still doing it, but um, it was pretty cool setup. I mean, yeah, we were at Disney for two months. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> can't be that. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, and his pedigree is. He must have done some good work because he ran a four four three. So. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, I was pretty. Uh, I mean, honestly, um, and my agent tells this story. I mean, he will still tell this story today. Uh, he had another prospect that signed with him, another safety, same year. We were both there together training. Um, I was like 100% committed. I, I knew that my pro day was like my only opportunity, you know, to, like I said, I wasn't invited to the combine. The other kid was invited to the combine. Um, so I was totally bought into this whole two months that I spent in Florida. Um, I literally, my wife still talks about it. I ate, I would eat chicken breast, broccoli, and rice every meal, just plain. Um, so my diet was crazy. Um, obviously felt probably the best I'd felt in my life. Um, and this other prospect, you know, he just kind of was going through the motions and wasn't really bought in. Um, long story short, I ended up getting drafted before, or he actually didn't end up getting drafted. Um, and a hundred percent of it was just through the whole process. That two months right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he just kind of, like I said, was just kind of going through the motions. Um, Did he come just from thought a, it was going to happen? Was he from a big time school? Uh, or, Washington. Yeah, so yeah, a little bigger than Wyoming. Yeah. 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 Again, don't skip that process part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I was just like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. Um, so yeah, it was it was fun, but um, yeah, I was ready for a cheeseburger after that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this episode is brought to you by Fly Sheridan, the Sheridan County Airport. They have three to four daily flights direct to Denver International Airport. They are operated by SkyWest Airlines and United. Book your flights at united.com. It's a direct flight right into Denver. Chris was just talking about his agent had to fly into Billings, drive all the way to Buffalo. Yeah. Now they probably could fly into Sheridan, still have to drive to Buffalo. but Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, And then uh, it's a great service. You know, they... They keep expanding at Sheridan County Airport, three to four daily flights. That's awesome. Right into Denver. Then you can go anywhere in the world from there. Um, this episode is also brought to you by Fine Sight and Sound, Wyoming's premier audio and visual home and business integration company. What does that mean? Their services range from custom home theaters, private home networks, that's security networks, audio networks, um, business security, and business audio visual sensor experience. They just did the Pony Bar and Grill, so new speakers, new security cameras. Uh, check them out at their website at FSSAVPro, so that's findsightsoundavpro.com, or call Aaron Perez, 307-751-6585. Perfect. And all right, we're back. So Chris was just finishing up his prep for uh, his pro day. Yep. Um, kind of a good advice again to young players. Don't skip that process. You know, um, you were putting in all that work for the two months and had a great pro day. If anyone wants to find it on YouTube, uh, the long shorts were in, you know. Baggy shorts. <laughs> yeah, the baggy shorts. Um, you can see what the weight room looked like. Um, yeah, that's probably different now. Have you seen the Have you seen the new university? Uh, yeah, I walked through it when they were just – I don't even know if they were officially eh, – I think they were, yeah. Yeah. I walked through it a couple of years ago, but it's, yeah, it's really impressive. And um, – I was telling, uh, I think Randy Welniak had given us the tour, awesome. um, but that facility is just as impressive or more impressive than any NFL, you know, training facility that I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's huge too, um, recruiting wise for the university. Yep. Um, which is cool to see. Yeah. No, I mean, I, the weight room was nice when I was there too. Yeah. The rack. So, um, yeah, they just keep putting resources around mm -hmm. the athletes and um i mean you can see it's paying off between some of the success with football basketball wrestling women's basketball everything yeah, yeah for sure um and the indoor you know that's been there for a long time but that's a great facility i think that people overlook you know that's uh valuable um 
Did you, I just had this, uh, did when you were playing state championships in high school, were they, were those at War Memorial? Oh, they were, uh, yeah, at one of the locations. So my junior year we played in Buffalo and then my senior year Star Valley. Yeah. Cause yeah. it was at whoever the, who the higher yeah. seed was probably. Yeah. Huh? Um, yeah, actually, I don't know how that worked at, now that you say that because my senior year, we hadn't lost, but we still had to go to Star Valley. Maybe they were undefeated, too. Yeah. Well, that uh, 3A, the 3A, 2A is always – there's yeah. so many teams that it yeah. gets Which whacked. I – I mean, it's, I'm sure, cool for kids to go to yeah. play at the war. Um, we get to use the locker rooms and everything, but I it was cool to play it in Buffalo, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, because we were talking about the facilities, and, you know, I think some of our kids might not understand, like – uh, I think they do when we walk through it. They're like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Wyoming's got world-class facilities. And yeah. uh, um, that's cool to hear you say, like, no, like, compared to some NFL teams, like, this yeah. is better than some NFL programs. So, yeah. Um, even, like, my year in Philly, our weight room was, uh, I mean, it was nice enough, but it was nothing compared to what they have at Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah, it's impressive. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. Uh, so okay, so you have your pro day, have a really good pro day. Like Tyler mentioned, you ran a, a four four three, right? So under you know pretty good forty. Um, we were watching the other drills, things like that. But um, so drafts coming up. Yep. Um, your agent probably told you you're not like a first day guy, but um, what's that yeah. whole week look like for you? Yeah. So after the pro day, then um, I kind of got on more radars just with my performance there. So then I would. Uh, like I said, I think I went on four or five team visits um, where uh, they just fly fly you to their uh, facilities. You inter- talk with coaches, do some interviews. You don't do any uh, actual workouts. Mm. Um, I think it's just more to meet the staff and whatnot. It's kind of funny because the, the places I went on those, it was Jacksonville, uh, Chicago, um, Philly, and then uh, – I think like Indianapolis and one other place. So I ended up playing it. Yeah, three of those three, places. Uh, the three places I played, I actually went on pre-draft visits. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I went through that whole process. And then um, some teams would actually fly there. Like the Eagles flew their position coach, the DB position coach to Laramie. We did a workout. They had to come to you if they want to do a workout. Gotcha. Um, um so then kind of going into it, um, I thought I had a good chance of going later in, in the draft, maybe sixth, seventh round. Mm-hmm. I was pretty confident just from what I was hearing. Um, but, yeah, leading up to the draft and then the draft itself, um, it's kind of funny because we did it uh, in Buffalo. Uh, it was like my birthday was the night, the day before, um, and – the crazy part is I had to get a new – I don't remember if I lost my phone or something. I got a new phone the week, like a few days before. Okay. So I had no contacts. And so I – yeah, I had no contacts. Didn't have anything on my phone. We went out for my birthday um, the night before. And then Saturday woke up, you know, so we were going to have a little party at my house. Um, but like I said, we were expecting it probably – in the afternoon mm-hmm. um we were all just kind of getting up and around and i had a florida number come through on my phone and at the time i was like i just got have to answer every call because i have no contacts <laughs> so i answered it, it was jacksonville um uh, basically yeah they just uh it's honestly kind of a blur just because it's so many you know emotions adrenaline mm-hmm. whatever um uh, running through you you talk to the coach and gm and tell you they're going to select you with the I think I was the 24th pick in the fourth round. Um, so, yeah, the cra- and another crazy part is I was – that was uh, the year of the lockout. I don't know if you guys remember. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, essentially, the NFL and the Players Association was negotiating the new collective bargaining agreement. Mm-hmm. Um, so, literally, they were like, we're going to draft you, um, but – you know, the lockout's here, so we essentially can't talk to you until this lockout's lifted. Um, so they, you know, tell you that. You talk to the GM, owner, whatever, uh, hang out, watch it across the TV, celebrate with fam- uh, family yeah. and friends. Um, and then it was really nuts because, again, 
my phone was blowing up, but I had no idea who anybody was. So I finally <laughs> just shut it off for the day. I was like, I'm just going to enjoy this. Yeah. Um, but going back to the lockout, yeah. So I literally talked to him the draft day and uh, what, end of April. Um, and then had no idea. There was just like no – being a rookie, there was no guidance. I didn't know. It's like all you knew was like the lockout's going to be lifted. I'm going to – I couldn't talk to any coaches, anybody for the Jaguars. Um so I just was working out in Buffalo, um, and then it was – I don't remember when they lifted it. J- end of June, maybe. Okay. And it was one day that it, they figured things out, and they're like, all right, get on a flight the next day. I flew out of Sheridan. Great nice. flight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, so I was like – it was kind of – you know, not, I mean, t- a typical year you have, you know, you get drafted and then you go to rookie mini camp, yep. the OTAs, the um, mini camp. Um, this was like, I literally flew out. It was essentially the same time that training camp would start. So I flew out across the country. I didn't know anybody. I didn't even know where I was going to be staying. Um, and that was the first time they couldn't, they didn't give me a play. Like, I didn't have a playbook. So I was trying to learn the, I mean, not just me, but all the other Everybody, rookies as yeah. well. So it was kind of crazy. Uh, it was an exhausting process because you're trying to learn an NFL playbook this, and at the same time go out and, you know, you don't have the off season to really, like, learn the playbook. Um, just kind of all thrown at you mm-hmm. um, within a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty uh, interesting um, process. It would have been nice to – have that r- rookie yeah. mini camp and yeah. then OTAs, yeah. yeah. But uh, we were all in the same boat. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but it was cool. Uh, it was exciting for you know, obviously family, friends, sure, and the community. So yeah. Um, what do you remember yeah. on the call? What's I, I know you said it was a blur, but like, what's one thing that sticks out always to you that you remember about? Uh, yeah, I remember. It's really vivid uh, as far as like where I was. Uh, I took it, and then obviously people around, so I tried to – I just ran into my parents' laundry room to, so I could actually hear. Uh, and then it's just they were just passing – I didn't probably didn't even know who I was talking to because um, <laughs> they, you know, Jaguar, between the owner and GM and coach. coach, yeah, you were just talking to a few different people. Um, like I said, it was pretty emotional just because, you know, you put so much into it. Um, and to kind of see it all come – Oh, yeah come into the picture it's pretty uh it's pretty exciting it was fun something i'll remember forever um yeah it was just a good good day yeah yeah yeah, yeah all around yeah and when you joined the jaguars that was the first year that shad khan bought the team right uh so i actually was in that transition too uh <laughs> he came yeah my my three i think i had a new coach every year the jaguars um I think Shad Khan came after my first year um, because I know I was with the previous owners. I can't remember their name. But, yeah, he bought the team, I think, after my rookie year or second year or something. Yeah. Yeah. 2012, that would have been your second year. Yeah. 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 Have you got – he's a cool story, too. I don't know if you guys have ever – I don't know. what you Do you know? It was he – Basically invented like the bumper on the vehicle or something. And I'm, came from nothing essentially, so yeah. it's cool. Um, and obviously now it's done well enough to buy an NFL team. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a Formula One team. Yes. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Yeah. Like, so pretty That's interesting awesome. guy. Um. Yeah. Somebody we should have on Sports Business Nation, yeah. Tyler. <laughs> <We should laughs> definitely do a profile. Maybe I'll on have him. you on his yacht. I invite you. Come do it. Yo, Shad Khan. Yeah. We can talk coaches and yeah. business. He would just pull his yacht up the next because the stadium in Jackson is right on the river. So he'd just pull it up. Pull it up there. Yeah. Heck yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um so you had a you had a, a, you know an unusual experience getting drafted, had the lockout. Um that contract though, so how did that when did that start happening? Probably when everything when everything was started to open up. Yeah. Yeah. That's another, uh, interesting kind of dynamic or story. Um, uh, rookie contracts are pretty easy to negotiate for agents cause they're all just slotted. So meaning, um, I was a 24th pick in the fourth round. So a lot of times it's like, okay, what last year's 
24th pick in the fourth round got this so you're going to be within that ballpark you know what i mean okay um, yeah there's not a i mean they're typically four-year deals um and so much guaranteed it's all kind of just based off of history and obviously um there's some fluctuation within there sure um but that was another thing with the lockout you can't obviously negotiate a contract so i didn't do any of that the off season so uh it was hard uh because, like I said, the lockout was lifted, fly out there the next day, you start training camp. But the, I remember the first day we were supposed to go out for practice, my agent called, and he's like, you know, we didn't have a contract. It wasn't that um, there was, like, a whole lot of negotiating going into it, but it was mm-hmm. just, like, the process um, that we hadn't signed yet. He's like, do not go out to practice. So I'm just sitting <laughs> in the locker room. Everybody's going to practice. So I literally sat in the locker room. I don't remember a couple hours just sitting there. I was like, this is not a good start. You know, and for me, I'm like, oh, I got to be out there. And, yeah. Uh, obviously, it was the right thing to do. Um, you didn't want to go out there and get hurt in the first hour and then <laughs> yeah, nothing in, nothing on paper. Uh, but just being me, you know, I was like half tempted just to do it. Um, I was just going to ask that. That's where this is important with the agent. Like, you got to trust him of like – yeah. Uh, because as yeah, a competitor, you're it like, wasn't a big deal, but in my mind, I was like, I'm a rookie. I got to go prove myself, mm-hmm. and I'm just sitting, <laughs> sitting in the locker room. Everybody <laughs> else is out in 100-degree temperatures. Um, but I, yeah, and I was just worried it was going to, like, last multiple days. But literally, I, I want to say it was, like, midway through practice, and they figured it out, so I was able Ran to. Ran out there. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> made, my, made my entrance. Um, but it was hard. So, yeah, it was pretty easy. Like I said, they're all slotted. It's yeah. more of those second contracts sure. where they can do more negotiating. Um, but I, you know, I was um, – I never had really complex negotiations, negotiations as far as, you know, it wasn't like a first-round draft pick and had a huge second contract deal that took a lot. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, you see guys now. I mean, shoot, there's some guy. You can see some of the NFL is just there's some some business savvy guys who now they don't they. I mean, because typical agent fee is three percent. Um, so there, I mean, which you start three percent of some of those numbers is pretty big. Um, but I want to say I don't remember if it was Indomitian Sue or Larry Fitzgerald. They didn't have an agent. They did it all themselves or with family and then i think uh lamar jackson i don't think he has an agent either okay so and i think he is a free agent so he's going through all that process which um that would be a little scary i mean i obviously wouldn't never do that but yeah guys yeah hopefully they they know what they're some asking good advice yeah. at least mm-hmm. yeah because that could get dangerous but if it all works out for them it's obviously a good move if they can do it yeah three <laughs> percent adds up when was the first experience for you, you know, you had an agent, but like, um, in a contract or just whatever that it was like, Oh, this is a business like yeah. from a coach or from the upper management. Yeah. Um, that's the thing I, you know, I had talked, talked to people coming into the league, you know, by the end of I had played seven years. So later in my career, I was a veteran. So you talked to a lot of advice, basically you'd give guys going into the NFL, um, you're always, you know, you going into it. You all you hear about is how fast the game is, how, you know, the impact big guys are, how the collisions, how hard they are, whatever, um, compared to college. But the thing, so you're somewhat prepared for that. Like that adjustment was probably easier for me more so than like the business side, mm. um, and not even the, not even the contract negotiation because I like I said you have an agent for that, but it's just the it's a business. I mean, I remember my rookie year, um, you know, all the rookies lockers are together and it's a week into it. So you start building relationships with guys and then you come in like the next day and the lockers cleaned out and you don't even know what happened. So it's just so much turnover. Um, and you know, there's good players and, um, it's not even so much, bad performance it's just a lot of it's money and contracts and um so yeah i just 
that was kind of opened my eyes. Like, dang, this is real. Like, guys are just getting cut. And, mm-hmm. Um, it's like he was a good player. Like, I, I don't even think he, <laughs> you know, he's like did everything right. Um, sometimes it's just out of your control. Yeah, I mean, you look if Peyton Manning can get cut, I think everybody. Yeah. It's on the chop. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was hard. I mean, that's probably the hardest thing. Um, Do you see it affect guys that um, they're seeing um, guys getting cut? And- oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And then you start, it can get into your own head, too. Um, but then, yeah, I kind of figured out the best is just kind of stay in your lane and just focus on what you can do. Yeah. Um, don't worry about other guys and their situations and their play and how they're doing. Um, Cause when you're competing, it's easy for guys to be like, you know, you're like, I'm competing against this guy. Obviously um, some guys get caught up in worrying about how well he's doing. Or right. If he's messing, you know, and they forget you can just, don't focus on themselves. So I learned pretty early just to focus on myself and not worry about kind of my competition, right. so to speak. Yeah. Um, and that seemed to help, but yeah, it's definitely a business and, um, pretty cutthroat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, um, and ahead. one, one story you told the kids that I think this fits into that too, is you, you mentioned that your longevity you felt was, you said your role, but then, you know, some guys that were probably more talented than you physically, uh, you know, didn't take like special teams seriously yeah. or some of those other things. Yeah. So my, that's kind of how I stayed in the league for seven years was through special teams and just, um, special teams. And then just being a solid backup. I mean, I started a fair share of games. Um, but yeah, kind of like I was telling the team when I went up there, a lot of time, I saw, especially when I started getting a little older, you see so many rookies would come in and they just everybody thought they were going to make their team make the team off of their performance on offense or defense. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, there's only 53 roster spots, so if you don't start, you have to have some value, whether it's special teams or whatever. And they're not you're not just going to suit up and be a backup but not be able to play special teams you get what i'm yep. saying yeah um so guys would just put everything into offense or defense whatever their position was um and then you know you would get to the special teams period in practice and it was almost like it was a break for them um but i i tried to almost do the reverse to where not a break obviously but more of my focus was special teams like sure. this is my this is where i'm going to make my money um so, yeah, I just put a lot of focus into that, um, and I just saw a lot of guys didn't do that. And like I said, they were more talented probably, and they were really good players, but at the end of the day, they weren't ready to start on an NFL roster, and then they had no value on special teams. Sure. And so I was like, well, yeah, and they would be cut. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you see, I don't know what the average career length is, probably two, just over two years. Um but a lot of it, just guys can't, they don't know their role or you yeah, know, they just don't want to accept it, I guess. Kind of goes back to when I asked you about, like, why Wyoming can get some guys in the league. You know, it's that yeah. blue collar. You know, some of these guys are entitled and they think, oh, you draft me yeah. first round. Like, I don't need to be on the kickoff yeah. team. And I, uh, going back, like, John Wendling, <laughs> it's, it didn't, me watching him just didn't stop when I was at Wyoming because then I watched him in the pros and I was like, oh, he plays special teams. He's sticking around. I got to watch him in the league for four years while I was still in college. So, like, another guy looked after him. I was like, yeah. you know, he's carving a pretty good path for himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of my, my role. Um, but, yeah, I was obviously, like I said, started a fair share of games as well. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, that leads me into my next question. Uh you know, great players, because you've been around some really great players, you know, what, what makes them different that you've seen? Um, it's funny. I tell people all that, like, yeah, people always ask who is the best players or, um, just ask about, you know, yeah. athletes, whatever. Uh, but it's, it's mo- a majority of the NFL athletes, everybody's a good athlete. Um, but then you have those like elite athletes, and it's like, who? I mean, like Odell Beckham or 
um, Calvin Johnson. Um, yeah, Tom Brady. He is, uh, I don't know, he's not quite the best athlete, but he's got something. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you have, like, those kind of just the normal NFL player and then those elite guys, and they just, I, I don't know, obviously very skilled athletically, just physically, but then a lot of them it's just a mindset kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, they just know they're the best and just supreme confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um which is another huge thing. Um, yeah, mental you have game. That, yeah, yeah. yeah ment- like, which is something I got. It was hard. I mean, you always – there's struggles all the time. I mean, you're on a national in spotlight, and then obviously you have your fair share of bad plays, especially as a DB. So the mental side of the game can be pretty exhausting too. Yeah. Um, but, you know, typically – there's psychologists on every team and sports, you know, sports psychologists. So working with them, I think feel like as my career went on, I got a lot stronger in that area as well. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. Yeah. It can be exhausting. Cause it's just, it's just a week to week grind. You yeah. Know? It's uh, what have you done for me lately? Kind of business. And you can have the game of your career one week and the next week, if you play crappy, then, yeah, it's like it's you're gone. Flips. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that can be tough too. Just the job insecurity, and you know, try, try not to worry about those things. But right. Yeah. Very cool. Um, you played against Calvin Johnson, right? So yeah. You've seen, you've seen him live. Yeah, I played against him. Uh, yep. In Jack, well, probably a few times, but yeah, he was. Uh, they didn't call him Megatron for no reason. It's like LeBron James is out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was pretty. He was good. And then we talked about uh, Maurice Jones Drew. Um, um, oh yeah, your one career interception yeah. was on. Yeah, Tom Brady. That's yeah. awesome. What do you remember about that play? Walk us the the. Uh, shoot! Now you're putting the pressure. It was. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm assuming I don't remember if I we were probably in a cover three and I was um, the deep third and I'm pretty sure it was the running back out of the backfield um, and he had our running and so the linebacker was matched up on him and um, he had a beat and then I just got a good jump on it and yeah it's on the sideline yeah but yeah it was uh, exciting. Did he run was, you down or did you just run out of bounds? No, or? I just <laughs> fell down out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, thank God I didn't have to. Show off my your return skills, yep. the lack of my return yeah. skills. Yeah. Uh, was that something you guys had uh, planned for? Kind of a, it sounds uh, like it was a swing that round. in particular? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. Shoot, I don't even remember that was so long ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I don't remember the exact defense we were in. or I just remember there was a back that was coming out of the backfield. And you jumped in. Kind of a wheel route. Yeah. yeah. So Awesome. Yeah, it was exciting. Um, still have the ball kept the ball so that was cool maybe one day he'll come and sign it for you or <laughs> yeah i know i should have him probably still haunts him to this day yeah. yeah oh yeah he'd probably yeah did you guys see that uh um this year the guy for the jets who intercepted him and then got him our the db for the jets intercepted tom brady and then got tom to sign the ball after the game yeah <laughs> yeah i'm surprised he signed it yeah honestly it's pretty competitive. Yeah. He took all the air out of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what I tell everybody. I had the ball in storage for a few years and uh, we moved one of our moves and I got it out and yeah, it was deflated. So I was like, it's real. <laughs> yeah. It's a real thing. It was right after all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, well, he, I mean, back to Tom Brady, it was pretty cool. Obviously played against them then, but when I was in Chicago, we had a chance to go practice against the Patriots. Um, so it, to be able, you kind of see behind the scenes a little bit yeah. of Tom Brady, but it was pretty cool um, to watch him for a few days. Um, and whatever, this was probably his 14th, 15th year, and he was still just as intense in practice. I mean, um, I just remember ripping some linemen for something. They obviously missed the block or something. Um, so he was on them pretty good. And then <laughs> – Typically, those practices, like, it's, like, ones versus twos. So, like, the one offense of the Patriots versus the two defense of the Bears. So, obviously, yep. I'm out there. And I just remember – I almost just started laughing because I was like, we don't 
we don't even stand a chance. Like he's just picking us apart. Like, <laughs> this is a joke to him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> playing against the two offense of the Bears, uh, yeah. two defense of the Bears. Um, but it was cool just kind of see him and how he operated and. Like I said, in 15 years in doing it, he was still just that locked in. Yeah, you know, in that a training camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how about Belichick? Did you get a witness any? Anything uh, out of I him? don't have any like stories with him, but yeah, I'm sure it's just kind of the same. Same way. thing. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, just all about his business, you know. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a really good coach. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was it was fun to see. That's awesome. Yeah kind of get that behind the scenes practice um Mm -hmm. experience um well unless tyler unless you got any other sports related questions for him um we'll kind of we'll roll it into the wyoming type questions and we will get to some crypto if whatever he can answer so um so you know you're a wyoming guy from buffalo graduated from uw with a business administration is that right okay what led you to that degree um so at the time going into it, uh, you know, I I didn't know obviously what I wanted to do, but I knew probably something in business, and I knew business administration was pretty broad, major, pretty diverse. I could do a lot out of it. Right. Um, so honestly, obviously, with what I'm in finance now, it's um, I was happy. I, I mean, it would have been nice if I could specialize a little more. Sure. Um, knowing, but um, yeah, I just knew I wanted to do something business related. Yeah. And, didn't know exactly, so I just kind of did the um, yeah. administration. Yep, broadest one, yeah, yeah. for yep. sure. Yep. Yeah, and if anyone doesn't know, Chris is you know a financial advisor right yep. at Elias and Financial, so um, that's awesome. Um, when did you – you've got two kids with, yeah. your, with your wife, Lexi. Um, when did you two meet? Yeah, we met in college uh, at University of Wyoming, and then she was a uh, year or two younger – in school than me so um obviously we'd made that work for a couple years right the long distance she would come out to jacksonville and i would uh come back to laramie in the off season and stay with her and train um there the facilities in laramie um but yeah obviously she graduated Mm -hmm. got married moved out and now we have a two-year-old and a 10-month-old yeah busy yeah Yeah. oh yeah yeah (laughs) yeah a lot changes and just 15 years yeah crazy to think yeah um so sounds like you know you still had ties to wyoming um did you always know when your career was done that you were going to come back to wyoming or no honestly um no to answer your question um even while i was playing lexi we we didn't really we weren't opposed to coming back but we just mm-hmm. always you know we were young Kids weren't really in the picture at the time. Right. We were enjoying the city, you know, a lot to do. So we figured we didn't really know where it would end up. I don't we Yeah. Just maybe end up in one of the cities we were in, back in Denver or whatever. Um, but, you know, as the career, my, you know, you, I had an idea that my career was starting to wrap up. Um, and then you start talking about a family, and that's kind of where the whole picture changes. Yeah. Um, Obviously, both being Wyoming um, grads and then growing up in the state, um, I think ultimately it came down. We just wanted to give our kids the same experiences and opportunities that right. we had um, growing up in Buffalo and her in Torrington. Um, and you can't, obviously, I wouldn't, like I tell people all the time, me growing up in Buffalo, all, in the summers, we would ride our bikes around, me and my buddies. Parents probably had no idea where I was the whole day. But they knew I'd be home at a time, and they knew people around the community would, you know, look out for you. Um, in Chicago, I wouldn't probably let my kid out of the front yard. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted that same type of opportunity where they um, – Had the freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah, something that we grew up in and were more familiar with. So – once that was the case, I um, uh, had a chance. Pete Eliason, who I'm working with now, Eliason, obviously, um, they were out in Chicago for a conference. Um, and my wife and Janessa in our office know each other pretty well. Uh, actually played volleyball at Sheridan for a year together. Um, so she got a hold of her. We went to dinner. Advising was really, I mean, that whole financial advising wasn't really, I didn't, 
it wasn't out of the picture, but it's something that I never really thought I would do. Right. Um, then he kind of just brought it to my attention, asked if I was interested. So I kind of just kept it in the back of my mind for the last couple of years of my career. And then, yeah. Um, just followed up and kind of always just kept in touch and did my research and thought it was a good fit. So, um, I knew we wanted to come back yep. at that point, and so just kind of all fell together yeah. real nice, which is great because, honestly, and you see it a lot with other guys, that's kind of one of your – and you, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with it too. Football, you know, you do it for so many years. It's kind of – it almost can become who you are, you know, so mm-hmm. then you know it ends and you're like, what now? Um, it can be a little scary – because it's like I said, done it for so many years, but all the the transition was pretty smooth. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, at least awesome. I, you know, I always had something to work towards. Yeah, look forward to. So awesome. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. That was great. Yeah. Um, anything from that, Tyler? That was great. Yeah. Um, so okay, as best you can, because I know you're uh, could be hand tied with some of these questions, I guess. But uh, what's your take on? Um, you know, athletes getting paid in cryptocurrency, you know, as a, as just on the business side, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't claim to be, uh, an expert, expert in crypto at all. Cause we don't do a lot of it. Um, and this is not side. advice either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but it's interesting. Obviously those things have changed and yeah, I've seen a few people that, you know, have want to designate so much of their contract to crypto. Um, yeah, I'm sure it has a place. It's just, um, for me in particular, I don't know yeah. enough about it, so sure. I would never probably go that route. Um, but it's definitely an interesting dynamic, and I wouldn't be surprised if you probably see more of it. Sure. Um, and would that be like years to come? Would OBJ taking his contract in crypto? Would that be a just kind of at his own discretion, or would that be something that maybe he talks to an agent, his agent about, and then he yeah, if he has an agent, it? I'm sure it all have to work through his agent unless you're negotiating it yourself. Um, and honestly, I I don't I don't even know how that would work. Um, yeah, do you, like do you select? Do I want Bitcoin or Ethereum, or Dogecoin? Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and if that's coming from OBJ himself or is the agent? Because yeah. I imagine the agent could recommend that. Yeah. I guess if you wanted. That's a great question. And this obviously wasn't a, really a thing. I do yeah. remember a guy in the locker room talking about Bitcoin uh, when I was in Chicago. And I almost just like laughed about it because I was like, what this guy? like he was one of those guys just kind of outside the box. On a, if he got in on it, then he's probably <laughs> sitting well. Pretty now. well yeah. yeah. Well, you know uh, who to hit up as a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Um, yeah, it wasn't really a thing um, while I was playing at right. all. And honestly, nobody was taking it as payment. Yeah, as payment. Contract. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but it's an interesting dynamic, and I don't know how it all play out. Um, yeah. I think the hardest thing is just knowing, you know, there's so many different cryptos. It's mm-hmm. like which one is going to rise to the top type of deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, no, for sure. And well, I mean, um, you know, statewide, you know, Wyoming's leading the way in it. You know, do you do you think Wyoming should take a position to speed that up, or do you think it kind of just wait back and see what it does um, from a kind of a financial advisor standpoint? You know, because there's a lot to it, and so, like you said, like yeah, yeah. Honestly, like I said, I wouldn't be knowledgeable enough to even give my recommendation of what they should do. Right. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of hard, but um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of know that Wyoming is a leader as far as all that goes. And um, pretty, been pretty open to the, to the option of cryptos and accepting of the crypto and, mm-hmm. and everything. Um, Trade it, you know, right. the trading of yeah. it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I couldn't even give them, I, I mean, I couldn't even tell you what I would, as far as yeah, them. there I've me personally, I still just feel like there's still a lot of unknowns about it. Um, obviously, you can make the money off of it, but you can. I mean, you watch crypto on a daily basis; it's pretty volatile. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, you know, if you can designate, 
you know, you have so much, but don't be, uh, yeah. Putting your, uh, retirement into crypto. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Cause there's just still a lot. It's still yeah. pretty early. Yep. But yeah, you definitely, I mean, obviously make money off of it. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Don't be a day trader, you know, yeah. don't, don't be, uh, yeah, and we don't claim to be that at Eliason either. Yeah. You know, long-term <laughs> investors. Yes, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Tyler, do you have anything over there? Or something that he said that... Yeah, I, th- I think it's very interesting that NFL players like OBJ are taking yeah. cryptocurrency. Is when, he one of them? I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, he took his whole salary. and His whole salary? Yeah, like, there's all the details. And I think it was... We want to dive into that more because it was like, oh, man, he's making a lot and he just wants to take it all in crypto. Yeah. So that's why the agent question, but... It's funny because you look at the NBA and you look at the Major League Baseball, you look at women's basketball now. Uh-huh. They're all sponsored by crypto, but the yeah. NFL is the only one that takes a stance against them saying, we don't want teams, we, you know, we don't want any crypto-related activities yeah. in sponsorships or naming rights at this point. So I, I kind of find it funny that NFL players are kind of mm. leading the push to get paid in Bitcoin when the yeah. overall yeah. NFL doesn't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's just with the regulations and stuff. I don't know what the NFLs would be waiting for. I know NBA. Yeah, you look at what the well, Staples Center now is. Um, yeah, crypto. twenty crypto. years, eight hundred million dollars. Yeah, is what Crypto. dot com said, and they said if they wanted, if the stadium wanted that money in the first year, they'd be able to give it to them. That's really? crazy. Instead of disperse it over the next twenty, so it's like okay. So the NFL like. Okay, you're gonna buy the Denver Broncos for four billion. Right. Well, there's a crypto company out there that's willing to put a billion dollars for twenty years on your name. Will, will you not accept that? Because yeah. I it, I think that's where it's going. Yeah. But they're quick to adopt cannabis and gambling. So yeah. what's the? I wonder what the. Yeah, maybe just the history. Um, um, like I said, I've. Just trying to get, learn more about yeah, because even the cannabis is still that's pretty new yeah, yeah. and um, it, w- it wasn't the case while I was playing but I think they're starting they probably just starting to see speaking on cannabis you know opioids and everything it's got to become a pretty big problem in the NFL whereas the alternate with cannabis is probably a lot less harmful long term mm-hmm. than some of these guys that are getting hooked on pain pills and right so beat up so um maybe it's just kind of the history i mean i don't know if history is the right word but just checking the box you know kind of doing the research but yeah i would imagine eventually you know if they see success with some of these other like you said nba whatever wnba mm-hmm. mlb i don't know they'll probably well shouldn't say but i would yeah. assume they'd start to adopt looking it. into it yeah. yeah and and a reason why those other leagues that i mean nfl is the most popular league there is mm-hmm. in america right so those other leagues are probably trying to make up for the contracts that they don't have with you know tv and media yeah, yeah. because the nfl signed 11 year 110 billion dollar yeah. media agreement with multiple outlets like yeah. that's more money than a couple right. of the other yeah so yeah that could be a good point maybe that's where they they're you know majority of, compared to those other leagues they just don't got really the, their need resources that, yeah. are coming from more tv money more so than the nba and um yeah which i don't know have any idea what the nba is worth yeah, or what their as TV. far as that but um yeah, it's just kind of probably finding those avenues and those streams of where they're getting sponsorships and finding money. Yeah. Well, and I was just thinking, Tyler, you know, so they're worth that. But then remember, any time a player's negotiating or the agent's negotiating, that's the owner. You know, and say you got Jerry Jones and he's like, I ain't doing that. You know, just – yeah, he just ain't doing it. You know, it's but his Jerry, money. You can avoid taxes, <laughs> yeah. right? So yeah. I mean, that's a great point. But you know, some of these guys, that's not how I do business, and I ain't gonna do yeah. it. Yeah, um, because yeah, you're right. There's 32 of them, so so they're they're, they're making that decision too. Yeah. Um, but that's a great point. You know, you don't, Jerry, you don't get taxed. Uh, but uh, and then I would say too for OBJ, I wonder how much is that is guaranteed. You Good know, because I want to you know, look. We should do a segment. Yeah. So, anyways, but yeah, wanted your your thought just because your your yeah. career and professional career, and then yeah, um, 
as far as OBJ? Or well, just, just, yeah, just in general. Finances kind of, yeah. And yeah. to that point, like, yeah. okay, so OBJ went from Ohio to California, and you living in Florida as opposed to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Tax rates, no yeah. income tax in Florida, ten, you know, uh, 5% tax in Chicago on top of 11% sales tax in Chicago. So do you think players are negotiating some of these contracts? Like, Yeah, 100%. Where they want to go? Uh, and I wouldn't, you know, obviously you don't have um, the option coming out of the draft. So I, I, and I didn't even – Obviously, wasn't the first thing that crossed my mind. Right. When I was drafted to Jacksonville. Like, oh, sweet. No <laughs> no state income tax. tax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, obviously a huge benefit. And, I, I mean, I know there's guys, I'm sure, if, you know, in free agency, if there's a couple of teams that, and they're one of those uh, OBJ or somebody looking at a big second, third contract, um, and they have the option between a Texas team and yeah, California or New York, 100%, I'm, I'm guaranteed they're talking about the tax implications. With their um, agent or whoever they're negotiating with, yeah. Yeah, um, and just kind of crunching the numbers and figuring out. And, it, yeah, and if I'm sure they can negotiate deals like, hey, let's say the Rams and the Texans, the Rams, that it, I want this much more because I could go here and, you know, this percentage is tax, you know, mm-hmm. income, no state income tax. So, um, yeah, it's huge. Um, something that, yeah, like I said, going into it, it wasn't ever crossed my mind, but I felt really fortunate, you know, to play almost four years in Florida. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you go to a place like Chicago um, where, Taxes are pretty crazy. Even cost of living in general. Property um, taxes in yeah, Chicago are yeah, killer. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, I always just rented it because insecurity of living. But um, even that, you know, a one bedroom apartment paying two grand for nine hundred, seven hundred square feet or Jeez. whatever. It's just crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's huge for players. Um, Something they definitely have in the back of their mind. I mean, it's obviously not the. You're not going to go somewhere for that reason, so that sole reason. Um, but like I said, if they're leaning like it's neck and neck, those kind of those kind of things definitely play out. Yep. Um, yeah, which state's most tax friendly? Yeah, yeah. I didn't ask you this. Uh, this is kind of a fun question. When you got your first uh, first check at yeah. Jacksonville, what was what was what was going through your mind and? Uh, yeah, uh, so I got my signing bonus. Um, well, that's another thing. It's kind of crazy because I just wasn't prepared being the lockout and whatnot. Um, and being an advisor now, I'd love to help, you know, rookies um, kind of this situation. But you get so – obviously your focus is football. So because how a contract – I don't know if you guys are familiar with your contracts, NFL contracts work there – you have your contract, but it's paid over the 16 or 7, well, now what is it, 18 weeks? Yep, 18 weeks. So you get, we call them game checks. So yeah. you're paid over those 6 or 17 weeks, um, unless you have guaranteed money, and then that can be whatever throughout the off offseason. Um, but, yeah, everything happened so fast, and I started, um, I had met with an advisor when I was training in Florida, but um, just obviously never signed the, with him um but i started getting these checks and because you get game checks i was like just had them sitting in my apartment I, like, <laughs> I should probably do something <laughs> uh, so i was like halfway through the season and i'm just sitting in my apartment with some game checks and, and i was like i yeah i need to um work with this advisor yeah put them um, away somewhere <laughs> but it's hard because like i said you're just so locked in i mean being a rookie you're just trying to figure out <laughs> everything really yeah um just focus on football so i was fortunate enough to have a really good advisor myself who yeah you just kind of put that all on them and they i see it's a lot of trust but um they kind of just handle that yeah. whole dynamic yep um what was it you were too busy or um to uh, or, or did like it manage kinda, it myself yeah yeah uh i think um I probably just wasn't comfortable at the time doing it. Sure. Uh, and, yeah, just too busy. It was like, 
yeah, I definitely would not have had time to try to manage my own yeah, portfolio. Right. Um, let it know, and I just, yeah, wouldn't didn't probably feel comfortable at the time either. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of those relationships it comes through your agent. So a lot of agents have nice. relationships with advisors, so they can hook you up with that. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah, it's all through your kind of agent. I mean, obviously, it's not. You don't have. I didn't have to sign with that advisor, right. but um, what are you know. What were some crazy things you saw guys buy when they got their first game checks? Or oh, everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, obviously, there's a lot of jewelry, <laughs> um, clothes, jewelry, cars. I had a teammate in Chicago who uh, I wouldn't mention his name. He uh, Bought, and I'm not a car guy, but he, I took, so I ran into him somewhere and he had just like hours before got a Tesla with like the butterfly doors. And the next day I saw him and he had already taken the car back. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, you probably, I don't know how you just drove that off the lot and probably lost, I don't know how much in value. Right. But yeah. There was some, um, there's a lot of really business savvy guys, but yeah, you see some, uh, questionable decision yeah sure here. oh yeah for some sure. pretty uh intense locker room gambling card games yeah um yeah those pots can get up pretty pretty high so do you, do you participate in those oh. you were talking about a game what did you call yeah, it Bure was a big game when i was in chicago um yeah and i don't even know if i should disclose this but i saw one pot and who knows if it ever got paid out but i i'm pretty sure it got up to like four hundred thousand <laughs> one pot for one and yeah, because Bure and I don't know, but it it's just like the pot builds so quick because if it's like one tie you all tie or something, so okay. then you have to you just keep playing. Yeah, you have to to get in basically, but then you have to put more money to play the next hand. Yeah, <laughs> but it was nuts, and yeah. So I'm I hope some deals were cut and they didn't have to pay that out. Yeah, I, right. They obviously had problems with their game checks too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And there's a, uh, and that's another thing. I think a lot of guys, me in particular, you hear so much about, well, there was an ESPN documentary called Broke, I think. Um, yeah. And I'm pretty sure the stat was like three, like the average NFL player is like broke within three years of leaving the NFL. So there's a lot, a lot of fear kind of, you're like, I, don't let me be that stat. Um, mm hmm which is good. Um, but yeah, a lot of guys still don't see it. And I think it's hard too, because you see a lot of guys that come from, don't come from a lot and they are thrown into this. They get all this money thrown at them. It's literally the, the most money. I mean, typically, you know, you start, you work up through the ladder, you're promoted in a typical career and you're making more of your money at the end of your career. Right. Yeah. Before you go to retirement. That's a hard thing with, um, any professional sport, really, you're going into it 20 years old, making the most money, and it's almost it's the reverse effect where it's so short lived, but you're never going to make that much money mm -hmm. in your life again. Um, but the hard part is these, you know, people establish kind of the style of living, <laughs> yeah, and then they just can't keep up with it when the checks aren't coming anymore. So, yeah, I think that's, um, and there's pro. I mean, you try to educate guys, but it's just it's hard. Yeah, because well, like I said, it's just and they're not really making three million dollars, right? When someone's like, "Oh, I signed a contract for three yeah. million. it's like, "Well, actually, let's yeah, break the down the numbers." Thing here. With NFL contracts, uh, a lot of they're not all guaranteed. Right. Um, like baseball and basketball, those contracts are guaranteed. You know, so you get you can negotiate a four year deal and so much of it's guaranteed. But if you don't play those, f let's say you play those first two years, those, you're not going to get paid the last two years of your salary. Right. I mean, there's different, but yeah, it's not all um, guaranteed like some mm -hmm. of those sports. And then, yeah, on top of that, there's obviously taxes and uh, different costs associated with that. Yep. Um, and some contracts, I imagine, have uh, you know, uh, you know, you we hear about the bonuses all the time. You know, how many catches you have or whatever it is. So, so it's performance based too on that. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, when speaking of OBJ, I think he hit some crazy bonuses. Yeah. In the last couple of weeks with his the playoff run. Um, but yeah, you have um, some of those bonuses that are incentives, I guess. Um, yeah, and then uh, what do they call it? There's actually a program, a lot of people, and it's aside from your contract, it's called player performance. Um, so I think the whole intent of it is um, it's basically you get paid per play. So let's say you're undrafted rookie. Um, if you end up, let's say you're undrafted rookie, you come in, you don't really get a signing bonus, right? right? Maybe $10,000, whatever. But then you end up playing. I think the the program is so then you let's say you play so many snaps in a game or throughout the season you're paid on every snap based off of like your draft position what year you are so let's say a undrafted rookie um comes in and plays the whole season he's going to get a huge uh, player perform- performance in check which is basically making up for his lost signing bonus gotcha compared to joe burrow number one pick he's just expected to play so like he'll let's say the undrafted maybe he's getting five hundred dollars a play that he's in any play every play he's getting five hundred dollars not a perf- no performance he could get beat for a touchdown uh but you know and then you have joe burrow whose player performance is obviously going to be significantly less because he's may, probably doesn't even have player performance i don't know yeah but that's another program um it's kind of a so it's aside from contracts yeah. that every player which is um Nice, I guess. Yeah. Kind of a good incentive. Protection for those, for those, for those yeah. guys. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Those guys that are late rounds or undrafted who end mm-hmm. up out, out basically outplaying their, the val. I mean, the value, initial value at least. Sure. So, oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't see those numbers con- figured into contracts. So it's kind of cool. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. The Bengals would have been broke if they had player performance with Burroughs this year. Yeah. <laughs> yes. you, know, you I mean, you see some of those undrafted guys, though. I mean, it's not uncommon. They'll be at you know, the end of the year, they could get a check for three, four $400,000. Yeah, because of their performance. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, which is cool. So. I only have one more question. Go for it. Yeah. You finished? Yeah, good? yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, this was a this is a tough one, but um, I gotta ask, how does it feel to be the second most famous person from Buffalo, Wyoming, behind Ryan Charles? <laughs> Ryan, that's my dog, Ryan Charles. <laughs> yeah, I love Ryan. Uh, it's like we're gonna just—that's the truth too. Randomly, like yeah. <laughs> you can still find it on there now, huh? Oh, yeah. I feel like all this stuff's getting taken off. Uh, <laughs> no, I grew up obviously. One of my best friends is his brother, James, and then grew up. Ryan's a little younger, but really close with Ryan. It's been fun. It's been really cool. Um, I actually have a lot of respect for Ryan for, just for what he – I mean, to try do what he's done, um, it's not, you know, a, a rapper from Wyoming, like just kind of the stigma, but he's actually um, – another guy has just kind of always put his head down and worked and doesn't really care, you know, what, but he's caught some breaks and I think uh, he's doing really well right now. I think he has some pretty exciting things coming up, um, which I'm sure everybody will hear about, um, but he's in Nashville now. Um, I think working with Ian, I don't know if you guys, Ian Munzik, mm-hmm. yeah, he's pretty close to him. I think that's helped a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for him. I think, I mean, shoot, it just takes just takes one, you know, to break one through. One break, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I grew up with him changing his diapers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Uh, the Tyler, I know, Adam Michelina, Tyler yeah. Gibbs, and they're always golfing and stuff. Like, yeah. that would give you some hell about that because that's yeah. it's been fun, you know. Yeah, it's fun watching him. Yeah. Um, like I said, yeah, it was, it was almost like, an, you know, when he first started, it was kind of like the butt of all jokes. You know, and nobody took him serious. But now I feel like he's kind of um, getting some notoriety, get some pub- publicity. and He found a niche. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. crazy. A real good niche. That's yeah. honestly, yeah, that's pretty genius. Um, it's really the only way you could, 
you obviously from a place like this, a cowboy rapper, right? What else are you gonna? Yeah. <laughs> How many yeah. rap stations does Sheridan Media exactly. have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't, you can't get too much street cred here. <laughs> yes, in, in yeah. Buffalo, Wyoming. <laughs> I've been seeing him walking with no protection down Coffee yeah, before in Main Street. So crazy. Yeah. Props to him. No, he's killing it. On <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. My daughter loves his uh, his new boot goof, and that's one of her favorite things. She watches that and Baby Shark and. Uh, of a gummy bear song or something, but I love when she asked and Chris Brzezinski's 2008 to 10 highlights at the University of Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. She probably wouldn't. She probably wouldn't last on that. <laughs> yeah, a couple <laughs> seconds. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, great question there, Tyler. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, and we're out.